Gracias. Well, it's fantastic uh, to be here today, particularly in a theatre, and particularly having heard about that marvellous talk about the Olympics, both aspects that my department deals with. We do so much to enrich people's lives. But as we also heard from Stephen earlier, we also look after some of the fastest growing sectors of the economy, both tourism, the creative industries, the digital economy, we account for over 20% of the British economy uh, in my small department. So we think we are driving growth and uh, enriching lives. And in doing that, we, we range from the arts and culture right through to literally digging holes in the ground to lay fiber broadband. So while some people like to call us the department of lovies, I always say that we range from lovies literally to navvies. Um, so my theme today is perseverance, and I want to argue that it's useful perhaps to see your career as more like climbing a tree than a ladder. A ladder, it offers just one route up. You're always having to cling on, you're always pushing to get up. Uh, but in my experience, the, a career is more like climbing a tree. It does take a while to get going but you can grow stronger, more solid routes that you can depend on. You can branch out and you can try different routes. You can pause on a strong branch and gather strength. There are seasons. Sometimes you can grow and flourish. Sometimes there are it all, times when it looks a little bit bleak. And there are times when you can catch up after a slow start. There may be times you can have a little nap uh, under the shade. And you can blossom and flourish with new growth, provided that you nurture the tree. So why has my career uh, suggested this? I never expected to become a permanent secretary. I know many men who assumed that they would. Uh, I know <laughs> many other men who wanted to get up that ladder. I actually only know one woman who in her 20s said she wanted to be a permanent secretary. I thought she was completely mad at the time. Um, but she, she is, and uh, all power to her too. So careers are long these days, and there's no need to hurry up that ladder. There is time uh, to climb a tree. So my career's had three stages, uh, and I've promoted women and diversity at every stage. The first stage of my career, I was an academic economist uh, in Cardiff University, and my research there was on women in the labour market and the lifetime cost of being a woman in terms of lost earnings from lower pay and taking gaps out and so on. Um, but then, after that third, um, my university was involved in an unpleasant merger with, with another one, and I looked to move, and I joined um, the civil service. And I spent the second third of my working career as a government uh, economist. And I did work on, on women in one or two jobs there. I won probably the proudest thing I've done in my entire life, actually, uh, during that third, was to introduce paternity leave. I think it's very, very important um, that men get an opportunity uh, to do things in the home. I hope. I have improved the lives for a lot of men and women by introducing that two weeks of paternity leave. And then in the third stage uh, of my career, I've been more in, in leadership roles in several uh, government departments, and I've been the champion for all, all sorts of aspects of diversity in that time, women, uh, disability, uh, LGB and T, um, and so on. And looking back on my career, the first third as an academic, I really drifted into being an academic. I never had a plan there. Um, but on reflection, I did learn some things in that time. I had some mental health problems, which have made me more tolerant uh, and sympathetic person. I got used to doing public speaking. I learned about bringing youngsters on. But even once I joined the civil service, I never really had a plan. I was never put on a talent program but I kept persevering, kind of one branch at a time. And it wasn't without its setbacks uh, in either of these uh, two stages in the civil service. 
usually due to bosses who unwittingly were undermining my, my self-confidence. But I hung in there, and now I do find myself um, as a permanent secretary. Now, I don't want to suggest that life is all about becoming a permanent secretary. What I do want to suggest, though, is that it's important that all of you here today are a tad, maybe a ted, more ambitious than uh, you are at the moment. This TEDx Whitehall uh, women, it's, it's for civil servants. Over half the civil service are women. Uh, but they are disproportionately in the lower ranking grades. So in the most junior grades in the civil service, nearly 60% are women. In the middle grades, it's about 46%. And in the senior civil service, it's 38%. And that is a trend that you see uh, in every department. Now, this is not a good state of affairs. There's a clear business case through lots of research showing that organizations which have a better balance of women at the top uh, perform better. And in the civil service case, we'll make better policy and better customer service. So we need more women at all those levels, at the middle levels and the senior levels. And businesses and the civil service are recognizing this. So there is an opportunity for women, even in your 50s and 60s now, the civil service is looking for experienced women. So I'd like today to inspire all of you to persevere and aim just one branch higher than you uh, expected to be. So what's getting in the way? So I want to offer you five tips from my own uh, experience. So the first tip here uh, is to beware of ambivalence. It's very easy to justify staying where you are in your comfort zone. You can think that the jobs above, they look too pressured. You want a life. You can appeal to your caring responsibilities, that you will be a bad mother or a bad daughter. Uh, if you aim for higher jobs. But actually, in my experience, this is entirely one's own problem. Actually, those folk are very proud of you. My mother's been proud of me every time I've been promoted, so now she really feels like the Queen Mother. <laughs> and, you know, my son, I mean, I did talk to him about whether I was a bad mother when he was about 13, and he said it would never occur to him that I wouldn't work. And, you know, it would be dreadful if I was at home all the time, <laughs> uh, you know grumpy and, and frustrated. So, yes, I, I definitely suffered from a kind of nagging ambivalence myself, but I always felt a bit undervalued. And I, looking at the men above, I, I sort of knew really they weren't any better than me. They just had more of a sense of entitlement uh, than I did. So I do think that ambivalence is a sign of a lack of self-confidence. So I think it's important that you have a go and face up to setbacks. Women are far too reluctant to try, far too easily put off by failing. So, you know, if a job is advertised on promotion and it requires six or seven characteristics or skills, the men will typically say, oh, I've got two or three of those, I'll have a go. Um, and the women say, oh, well, I've only got six, so I'm really clearly not up to that job. And of course, the men, they put in their application, they tidy up their CV, they get an interview, and guess what? They probably don't get the job, but they've tidied up their CV, they've got their name around, they've had some interview practice. And of course, it's normal to fail uh, in getting a job. If you interview only four people, only one gets the job, three don't. So the average experience is not uh, getting a job. And in, my, in my, my career, I very rarely got jobs at the first attempt. Certainly when I was promoted to director and to permanent secretary, I, I got the job at the third attempt. So it's important, I think, to treat these things as practice and not as a blow to your self-confidence. Third tip, I'd say, is to remember the wide range of your skills. Bring all of yourself to work. Domestic skills do count. So think of everything that you've got to give. You know, how many men can multitask, kind of run a house, a garden, birthdays, Christmas, and do a job? Um, I always say, if you can get a Christmas dinner on the table by 2 o'clock with six different vegetables and everything hot, likelihood is you'll be good at project and program management. <laughs> if... If you can resolve playground disputes, 
likelihood is you'll be good at dealing with squabbles amongst special advisors. <laughs> um, and now this slide isn't a very easy one to see, but it's just a proof that men do appreciate all these skills that women have. This is a birthday card that my son made me when he was 12, and there was a sort of super mum on the front of it. And inside, there was this thing, the eight-handed super mum. And in each section, there's a little hand. So there's reading, cooking, living with boy, helping boy, <laughs> helping boy with mostly everything, trying to relax, uh, buying best house, tidying, and finally uh, working. So I've always kept that. It's one of my uh, favorite things. And it certainly shows that he uh, was very happy with me working. My fourth tip is about uh, valuing your ability to bring out the best in everyone. So here we have uh, a picture of myself and my son and my uncle outside Everton uh, Football Club, where my lovely, <laughs> my lovely dad's ashes are under the pitch there. And all my staff know that I support uh, Everton. Uh, Simone, who organized this day, knows that this is pretty much always a character-forming uh, activity. Um, but look, you know, work these days, it's increasingly about teamwork and collaboration and emotional intelligence. And I'm amazed always at how few senior folk know anything about their colleagues or about their staff, whereas I'm much more nosy. I like to know about folk. I like to know where they live and what their hobbies are and all that sort of thing. And it helps to know how to get the best out of them. And, you know, even with ministers, it helps to know a bit about them, to see them more as people facing up to all the huge pressures that, that they're under. And, you know, we have amazing people in our offices with huge skills that we're not using. I mean, a lot of the people in the most junior jobs have, do incredible things outside of work. But at work, we don't use those skills very often. They come in and they do a fairly routine job. Um, and their work isn't very inspiring. And, and it's incumbent on us... Uh, to bring out those skills too. I think it also helps understand when people are not perform performing well because very often that's to do with some horrendous thing that's going on outside their life. And personally, I think it's important that they know something about you. So for me, it's the, the Everton thing. They know I'm a gardener and that sort of thing. It's important that your <coughs> colleagues know your, your vulnerabilities so that they can help. You know, I can assure you there are still times when I'm sort of edging on the precipice of self-doubt, you know, and it's not as bad as it used to be, but there are, are still times. So I think it's, it's very uh, important knowing people and certainly uh, very, very important for women to help uh, other women up, um, climb up the tree. You know, we all know one or two queen bees. You remember the one uh, in the movie. And I think it's uh, Madeleine Albright who said that there's a special place in hell uh, for, the, <laughs> for the queen bees. So lastly, uh, I would say that it's really important to think about your personal impact and how you can make the best of yourself. So for years in the Treasury, I suffered from shortism. Everybody at the top seemed to be very tall, the ministers, the people around them, and, you know, you're always looking up, and I thought, oh, this is all ridiculous, you know. But then I went on a course for women at Harvard at the Kennedy School, and they gave some talks about all manner of things. And it turns out that shortism is important, and it is something you should worry about. And if you're doing public speaking, and you're under five foot five, then you've either got to stand on a box or wear the killer heels, but not that pair. <laughs> Which brings me on to clothes. So when I joined the Treasury, my mum said, oh, what are you going to wear? What are you going to wear? You'll have to have a suit. And I was like, Mum, this is all about how clever I am and the advice that I give, you know. But actually, uh, it is important to look smart at work. You're not going to get the job or be thought well of by a minister if you turn up looking like a bag lady. You don't have to spend a lot of money to buy a jacket in H&M or M&S or so on. I think it's also important to think about when you're likely to be having a bad day. Uh, it could be the wrong time of the month, or it could be because you've been at a party or whatever. You know, that is not the time to schedule your staff appraisal. And <laughs> it is not the time to schedule your appraisal of your own staff. Um, 
So I had a dreadful boss once who was very macho and would fly in from Washington at six in the morning and then come into the office and demand all sorts of meetings. And, and I used to get very upset by the impact he had on me until I realized that was just how he was. You know, so um, I think it is Im important to understand sort of the bad and good days that other people have too, and very important to minimize the self-inflicted bad days. So very important to have uh, plenty of sleep and to kind of nurture yourself generally. Um, fitness is very important for me. I have to do some uh, exercise every day. So to uh, sum up, uh, beware of ambivalence. Have a go. Value all your skills, especially your emotional intelligence, and think about your personal impact. So my final message is keep at it. Don't give up. Perseverance does pay. Your career can blossom over seasons. It's not a race. It's never too late to start growing. Uh, indeed, the tree can grow taller than the ladder over time. Uh, so the point is, it's not about getting to the top. It's about growing and flourishing. And to illustrate this, my uh, lovely husband went out this morning to dig up a tree. <laughs> so it's a yew tree. And I'm going to give this yew tree to Eve in my office, who's getting married next week. And uh, it was Eve who suggested the uh, tree analogy. So my appeal to you today is to reach for one higher branch than you thought that you could uh, get to. Be a ted more ambitious, and you can do it. Thank you very much. <laughs>